Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 25th, 2020, recorded around 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look at the wide Atlantic Basin right now, all is generally quiet across most of the Atlantic Basin. We have the remnants of post-tropical cyclone Beta located over northeastern Mississippi and central Alabama at the time. This will be lifting on out of here over the next several days, and this will be of no significant concern to land at all. In the meantime, we also have a couple of features right now across Africa. Nothing expected to develop over the next several days. Strong upper-level winds and dry air should prevent any substantial development out across the deep Atlantic Basin right now. And then we're also turning our attention back towards the Caribbean over the next several days as we might get something to try to develop there. Uh, but we'll take a look at more of that here in a moment. Now you can see here on the five-day graphic from the National Hurricane Center post-tropical cyclone beta. Again, it is now a remnant circulation moving on out of here, located right now over Alabama, moving off towards the north and east. And this will be bringing some rainfall over the next several days to portions of the Midwest and northeast United States. But other than that, this is not expected to be a big deal as this uh, traverses up uh, into the higher mountainous train. Uh, of course, some heavy rainfall potentially, but other than that, this is now post-tropical. And for the first time since, since about September 4th, we are dead quiet down here in the deep tropics. So thank goodness to that. Now, a large part of the reason why that has happened is all the sinking air that is across the Atlantic Basin right now. You can see that this is the uh, map showing convectively coupled Kelvin waves. And whenever you see this kind of the yellow and orange and brown, this is suppressive air in the atmosphere. This is associated with a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave. And this typically goes on to suggest that we will likely not be having any substantial uh, development over the next several days across the deep tropics. But you notice what's lurking back out there right now. We do have uh, additional waves a, an enhanced Kelvin wave is across this vicinity right now. This will be slowly drifting off towards the east over the next couple of days and provide a concern uh, substantially uh, for an increased a bit of activity in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico as time goes on. So once this shifts over, we are going to start to see that change occur back into an active phase, particularly uh, across the Caribbean. And we can see that here kind of showing up within the Mount Julian Oscillation as well. This is the velocity potential at 200 millibars or at the 200 millibar layer in the atmosphere. This basically works, the Mount Julian Oscillation basically works at much like the same of a Kelvin wave. It's just larger in a slower propagating time. But we can see that we have a fairly substantial sinking branch of the Mount Julian Oscillation across the Atlantic Basin right now. This will be shifting off towards the east over the next several weeks. And then we can see this rising branch over here over uh, portions of the Indian Ocean and the West Pacific. And this will be then correlating into the Atlantic Basin with time. And uh, we'll start to see this kind of propagate once again. We already saw what happened the first time, the, the, the first time that this happened uh, a couple of weeks ago with this big bout of, of uh, tropical cyclone and hurricane development. So we could see another round of that occur, but this time more so focused in the Caribbean uh, instead of the deep tropics, as that's the time, this is the time of year now that we would typically start to see that happening. So it seems like that's going to be happening. We can see here the week two extrapolated forecast has this branch of the Mount and Julian Oscillation now beginning to shift from the West Pacific over into the East Pacific. So the Eastern Pacific could become active once again for a little bit of time. It's, it's been generally shut down uh, really since the beginning of late August into September uh, because the Atlantic Basin was so active. But we could see as this branch, the, the rising branch moves back into the East Pacific, we could start to see uh, tropical cyclone and hurricane development out there in the Eastern Pacific. And then in the Atlantic Basin, we will probably start to see this shift over and cause yet another spike, especially 
out here across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico and uh, just near the Lesser Antilles, we could see yet another spike of tropical cyclone activity and a burst of that happen. So is anything going to develop right now? Well, the short answer within the next five days, no. But beyond that, we are watching for some interesting developments to happen. First of all, this is the GFS 200 millibar winds. This is again at 200 millibars in the atmosphere. We can see right now this is by zero Z uh, tonight. So eight o'clock tonight, we have an upper level anti-cyclone right now over the basically the southern Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, uh, kind of stretching over Florida. That's causing a little bit of an amped disturbance right now to the east of that, but strong upper level winds should keep anything from developing out there. Now, as we go on throughout time, we're going to have this trough that starts to dig down. You can see here, this is by Tuesday or by Monday evening, we start to have a trough that digs in across the central United States, and we can see the, the jet max located in through here. This is kind of the, the jet maximum region. The trough axis would be positioned uh, right in through about here. That's the trough axis. And the bottom of that, that's your trough. And again, you can see that this is going to start to work its way down across the Gulf of Mexico. And we can see that the winds out here in the Gulf of Mexico actually start to increase out of the southwesterly direction. And we start to, or the west and southwest direction. So we start to get an increased wind flow across the Bay of Campeche region right here. We have increased trade winds coming out of the low levels uh, to the east, blowing from, uh, really blowing from west to east or from east to west rather. And these uh, westerly trade winds in through here, or you know, th these trade winds, what they're going to do is they're going to cause a wind gap in this period right here, in, in this general area. They're gonna cause a wind kind of convergence. And we can kind of see that here on the GFS forecast that as this trough does move by, we kind of get a cyclonic flow in the atmosphere. And this might help to induce a little bit of a low pressure uh, system to end up developing out here uh, somewhere near the Bay of Campeche, Gulf of Mexico region. And uh, again, not really super concerned about this. The upper level winds right now would generally be unfavorable for any substantial development you can see. Uh, upper level winds here at about 30 to 40 knots, so there's going to be some strong wind shear as this trough kind of bottoms out and, and moves away. It's going to be a pretty potent trough, uh, so there could even be some severe weather up across the northeast just out in front of that jet maximum region. You can see uh, the jet max here across the northeast running at about 140 knots here up in the 200 millibar layer. So there definitely could be some severe weather out in front of this trough. Uh, if we do get enough moisture return, uh, which is maybe something we'll, we'll actually look at here uh, tomorrow. So if you guys are interested in seeing maybe some severe weather kind of thrown in there and learn the dynamics of weather, I, I can certainly cover that. But um, more than more than that, though, more than just the severe weather potential, we could see an area of low pressure develop somewhere here off the Yucatan or in the southern Gulf or Bay of Campeche. And we can see that illustrated here on the Euro. This is the uh, zero Z run uh, from the Euro. And we can see that here's that trough coming in by day five. This is kind of that trough and associated cold front. Now we can see that here on the, the uh, Euro that we do get something to develop, but it's well inland over here across Alabama. We also get this little bit of energy down here trying to stretch out uh, across the Bay of Campeche and we'll have to watch that for any signs of consolidation. Currently there's nothing there but you can see this is uh, further out in time but there is a, a little kind of a wind gap in here some cyclonic turning and there is a little bit of vorticity in here as another kind of cold front dives in this would start to pull that system more towards the north instead of let it go into the Central America region so there's, you know, not something necessarily to watch, but it is going to be interesting to see how these uh, kind of all play out. You do have a pretty big ridge of high pressure out across here right now. So any of these tropical waves coming straight westward, not really expecting any substantial development out in here. The season really for the main development region is coming to an end, although we can still get development out there this time of the year. Uh, it's becoming less and less likely, and we are now going to start to turn our attention out towards the Bay of Campeche.
the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And, and just remember, Florida, this is the time of year where you get hit the most. Typically, on average, uh, you receive your most major hurricane hits uh, in October. So it is something to be mindful of. Of course, we all remember Hurricane Michael, Category 5 Hurricane Michael that struck the Florida Panhandle on October 10th of 2018. So just remember that we still have a long way to go in the hurricane season, almost about really another month before things are really starting to quiet down and end for the season, uh, that being in the early part of November. So again, we still have a while to go, and we still do have a lot to watch. Again, right now, nothing to watch, but uh, in the, the medium to longer term, we will have uh, potentially something to watch out there in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico region, but nothing to be concerned about just yet. All right. With well, that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your morning and afternoon. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.